Hello guys, how are you doing? I hope everyone doing very well and great. So in our last video, we discussed what are the problems we are facing with the scaling process on the microservices and how we can handle it. We practically demonstrate how we can do that. But there was a small problem we yet to solve. That is, what if the request timeout go beyond the uh, limited threshold, right? So for example, we get the SIG term and then after some time, Kubernetes will send the SIG kill. And then what if still our process is running, process is running until we get the SIG kill. So if you don't understand what is this, if this is like a Greek for you, go back and watch my video. I explained that in theory, what is the SIG term, what is the SIG kill, what is the threshold period and how we can handle those and how we can configure those and everything. Right, so we discussed this, that's what I'm skipping all those technical jargon in this video. So now, today we are going to discuss this. So what, let's say uh, in the zero second you get the SIG term and then we are you, you are doing your work and let's say 15 minutes you are getting the SIG kill. So if you have 15 minutes, right, so it's our responsibility, every single request what we get, we need to make sure it either process or either send a meaningful message to the client saying I couldn't complete this request within 15 minutes, right? So in that case, when the SIG term comes and the pod get killed, still you have some sort of a logs or the record saying this request didn't complete because of it couldn't complete within the desired timeout, okay? So today we are going to demonstrate that. So before we go into the video, make sure you subscribe to this channel if you're not subscribed and also make sure you share this channel with the people, with your friends who are interested in this type of content. So then let's go into the video and see how we can solve this problem. Okay, for this one, we are going to use the same project we used in the last video. Uh, we just need to create new interceptor here. So I'm going to create an interceptor called uh, HTTP timeout interceptor. Okay, so now I just need to modify this interceptor to handle our timeout procedure. Let's modify the code to handle the timeout, but before that I want to use a logger because then I can log when the timeout error comes. So then later on we can go through the logs and figure out how many time this timeout occurred. So that helped to fine tune. So this should be equal, not the colon. And now I'm going to keep a variable to keep the uh, timeout value. So in the long run, in the real production, this should come from the configuration. So I understand that. But for sake of example, to make this simple, I'm going to hard code here. Um, so then let's uh, let's keep some value. And then I'm going to use the pipe for this uh, interceptor. And with pipe, I can get uh, call my RxJX functions. So let's pipe this and inside the pipe I'm going to call um, let's use timeout function. So this is from RxJs. So make sure when you uh, use this it's coming from the RxJs. And then I'm going to pass the value which I configured to the variable and then I'm going to use the catch error that function also from RxJs itself. So after calling catch error, I want to make sure this error is from timeout error because otherwise I should not give the same error message to the caller. And I'm going to check if this is coming from timeout error. If so, first thing is I'm going to do is log this. As I said before, so then we can go through the logs and analyze how many times this error occurred. So then we can adjust the timeout value based on that. So we can say this number of seconds. Okay. So now I'm going to return uh, as a throw error to outside. Okay. I'm going to pass the same message. So in that case, caller knows exactly what has happened. Let's copy and paste it here. Right, so now if this is not a timeout error, I am not giving this message, but I'm going to return whatever the error came inside. So I'm going to return it as it is. Uh, 
right we are good so now uh, this value will be like this is a, this is a, a random dynamic value I put here us to test this and now we can go back to app module and we can uh, set this as a provider so there are multiple ways in the nest you can do that you can use as a uh, use provider from the app but I prefer here sorry use interceptor from the app but I prefer here so I'm going to use a provider saying app interceptor and then I'm going to use use, uh, use class and I'm going to give my class name from here so this will help uh, to detect our nest.js DA frameworks to get our interceptor whenever we want right so I think we are good um, so now what we need to do is uh, let's get this value uh, to increase a little bit more so it's easier to detect like because if it is a uh, uh, sleep is a 5000 and if you're waiting is 2000 then obviously timeout has to come right so as I said before this value must be come from configuration so let's talk in the next module next video um, to how to do that in the configuration using a dynamic modules right so let's run this project okay so go back and send this request I'm expecting a timeout error yeah so I got this I got the response saying timeout occurred so uh, request not completed okay so you can see the error also logged here and but there's a problem with the error so it says a uh, large number of seconds because I forgot to divide by thousand so now it should work yeah now it's giving the proper error response and it's logging also the provider okay so we are good but uh, you can see here uh, if we uh, give this reduce this timeout for uh, some let's say it's a different value so you can see the proper response came right so that response timeout error comes only if we cannot if we couldn't response within the given time right but there is a one catch here right because of the nature of the javascript so you can see actual nature of the nest so you can see okay i'm going to put a log statement in after the sleep right so sleep will throw an error but still this log will print okay what it mean even though error thrown the the process is still continue the reason for this because uh, uh, timeout handled by the interceptor and the request process by a different context so uh, it won't uh, understand whether this timeout occurred right so like for example if i put other weight here for other two seconds and if i print the log after that still you will see uh, this problem ha happens right so you can see you will see still this log prints so um, I couldn't think of any solution for this as of now but, but there are solutions like I can kill the threads or whatever something or I can restart or whatever but those are not reliable solutions if you can come up with a good solution for this problem just comment or like um, so let me know so then I can consider that as well so right so that is so far so now we can see it's working fine as we expected Solving one problem at a time is the best way to solve bigger problems, right? So we have bigger problem to solve how to uh, make our service scalable friendly. Now we solve two problems. One last video, we solve one and today we solve other. Did we solve everything? No, we have some more configurations to do. So let's keep that for the next video. And till that, stay safe. Take care.